Shabbat Shalom. I'm having a very patriotic week. On Monday, I began my week with jury duty. Myself and 200 of my closest New York City neighbors sat in boring white rooms hoping that our names would not be called. Yet, we also knew that as much as we didn't want to be there, this was a civic duty and our presence in these jury rooms was important. On Thursday, I woke up early like millions of other Americans to watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade with my kids. While cutting onions and peeling carrots, I saw colorful balloons move across my television screen, along with plenty of singing, dancing, and clowning. I continued the day by cooking turkey, stuffing, and all the fixings necessary for a proper Thanksgiving Day meal. Later, I sat down with my family to enjoy the food and the company. Our souls were nourished and our bellies slightly overstuffed. This week, I would call myself a Jewish American much more than an American Jew, maybe because I spent more time outside of these synagogue walls than inside of them. But also, the activities that consumed my week did not connect me with my Jewish heritage or soul. I felt more connected to the Americana I saw all around me this week, feeling the passion of patriotism and the power of my own citizenship. I wonder about the difference between calling oneself an American Jew versus a Jewish American. What really classifies a person as one or the other? How do you know when you fit into one category or the other? And is that distinction really so distinct at all? Making distinctions and classifications is actually all that matters when when it comes to identity. The titles we use, the names we choose, even the statements we say out loud are all about how we express our identity. It is who we are, who we are not, and the tiny, sometimes not so tiny, differences that separate us from someone else. When crafting curriculum for our religious school, I think a lot about identity. How will we create a strong identity? What does it mean to teach someone so that they can turn their knowledge into identity. Our teachers often have to start with moments of identification, like engaging in certain activities or with certain elements of the community. But our goal is always to move into developing, defining, and strengthening identity. To help our students articulate what being Jewish means to them, and to be able to state unequivocally that they are Jewish. To give our learners a safe space to try out the different ways to be Jewish and to find the right way for themselves. We want them to pick their distinction and to be proud to share it outwardly with the world. So yes, It matters if we say we are a Jewish American or an American Jew, not because one is better than the other, because we need to know who we are. It matters that we are sure of what it means for us to be a Jew. And it matters that we are sure of our identity even when it can and will change. How can we ask the next generation of Jews to develop strong Jewish identities if we cannot clearly state our own? There are those who argue we shouldn't care about anyone else's opinion of our identity as long as we feel authentic and honest to ourselves. What does it matter? There are those who believe that internal identity expression is is all that is important. Yet being authentic isn't just about what we think of ourselves. I bet that we all spent a few minutes, at least, thinking about how we would be presenting ourselves today. Did you look at yourself in the mirror before you left the house? Did you put on a specific shirt or skirt or pants? 
Did you put on makeup or make sure to comb your hair? Did you think about carefully phrasing the things you put in an email to a colleague today or the way you explain something to your boss? Why do all of that if not because you wanted to make an impression about your identity? We think about our appearance because we want to convey something specific to the world. We are careful in the words we choose and use because we want to come across in a specific way, be known as a certain kind of person. The external expression of identity is essential to having a strong and comfortable sense of oneself. We want others to see us the way we see ourselves. We strive to ensure that the mirror that is human interaction is accurate. Even our current Torah text is obsessed with how we present identity. In last week's parasha, Jacob pretended to be his brother Esau in order to steal the blessing meant for the oldest sibling from his father. This week, Leah pretends to be her sister Rachel in order to marry Jacob. Both Leah and Jacob pretend to be someone else only to quickly be found out after they succeed in their deceptions. Both Leah and Jacob are encouraged and helped into co-opting their siblings' identities by their parents for their own benefits. But both Jacob and Leah seem unhappy with the results of not being themselves. Jacob and Leah lose themselves for a bit. They forget about their own distinct identities and by choosing to be their siblings, are effectively stating that they themselves are not as good. In forsaking their own identities, they no longer feel secure in who they are. Jacob wrestles with himself, and the rabbis share stories of Leah wrestling with her sister. Jacob and Leah, now bound together in marriage, are also bound together in insecurity. They gave up themselves to be something else assuming that it would give them what they wanted. Yet all it got them was more unease. Being certain of who we are and who we are not helps us feel grounded and moves towards peace and happiness. I'm sure we can all relate to Jacob and Leah. We've all had times where we pretended to be something we are not. Times when we hid our true selves and attempted to wear someone else's identity. We too were left feeling empty, unhappy, and unsatisfied. We wondered where we lost ourselves in the midst and why we didn't really get what we hoped for. This past Monday marked the Transgender Day of Remembrance. This annual observance honors the memory of all lives lost in acts of transgender violence. Victims of transgender violence suffer because others do not accept their outward expression of identity. For victims of trans violence and other members of the trans community, a seemingly insignificant distinction like American Jew or Jewish American becomes a powerful and provocative, provocative distinction about gender identity and gender expression. And while we may or may not understand the categorizations they are choosing and living in, it is important and authentic for them, and we have to respect that. I, for one, am in awe of those in the LGBT, LGBTQ community who can be so sure of their identity that they go to great lengths to change their outward appearance in order to match their internal selves. That must be beautifully liberating, even when it is scary and potentially deadly in our current world. I wonder what it would take for me to be so confident in my own identity that I could state it unequivocally to the world, even in the face of great danger. Dr. Seuss tells us that today you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. But the power of this rhyme is not just knowing who you are, but being unafraid to live it outwardly. 
The importance of identity is not just being able to make the distinction between something you are and something you are not. The importance comes in sharing it with the world. Does it matter if you're a Jewish American or an American Jew? No, of course not. What matters is stating it to the world. What matters is that we are willing to light the Hanukkah candles next month in the window so that all will know who we are. The most brave in the world today are those who stand up and say, this is who I am and this is what I believe without hesitation or concern about the risk involved. Identity, a strong and secure identity is power. And this too is our task. This Shabbat, as we watch Jacob and Leah struggle with whether they alone are good enough, let us know to be not led down their paths. Let us embrace whatever elements of our identity we are sure of and use them to empower us. Let us feel that we are enough and stand up for the things that we deserve. Let us be unafraid to have our outside expression reflect our in, inward emotions. And may we all live as proud Americans and proud Jews.